Hi everyone, I'm George and welcome back to the Anime Grove. Today it's time for Ruby Volume 2 OST Reaction. Being completely honest, I started doing this yesterday, this is my second trial, but um, I didn't listen to the songs, I started recording this, I started the first song and I stopped it like 30 seconds in because I was feeling completely inspired and I felt like I owed you people a better reaction or at least a better try at reacting to the OST. So here we are again. Don't worry, I didn't continue listening to them, so I don't know any of the other songs, and I even didn't even finish that one. But um, anything else to say before we get into it? We're going to be listening to, as a bonus track, to an acoustic version of one of the songs for uh, Volume 1, because I believe, if I'm not wrong, um, Jeff Williams made the arrangements for this one to be a different version, an acoustic version for Volume 2. I'm not sure, let me know in the comments because I know I've been told, but it was a while ago and I honestly forgot. And being honest, comments always come <laughs> uh, nice in YouTube. Um, and just before we begin, I wanted to say that thank you to all of you that have been supporting me up until now and that will be hopefully in the future. This isn't the first time I react to an OST, but actually it's maybe the second one, so um, I'm not sure what to say or what to focus on, so <laughs> please um, give me some space <laughs> in that regard, and just um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope I can give you what you want. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. And a huge thank you to Starcraft Squall, I believe is how you pronounce the name, for making and sending this playlist so we can listen to it without any spoilers or any worries. And now, without any further ado, let's get into it. But first, remember to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, the whole spiel. I can't wait anymore, so let's get into it. Ruby, Volume 2, OST Reaction, go! Sorry, I gotta introduce the song first. So this is going to be Time to Say Goodbye by Jeff Williams and Casey Lee Williams. I said take it, but whatever. This is the opening, right? Um, is this song about them growing up and becoming real huntresses or maybe even be about the white fang well maybe not the white fang but the faunus that fight for the faunus right, rights like the white fang used to do yeah I think it talks about them um, Leaving behind the safety of being children, of being young, in order to fight to do whatever they can to help society, fight the grim, and help and protect people. But I also feel like we can see it from the Phonos perspective, though. At day when we won't crawl, I feel like that talks about the Phonos, how they sadly, sorry, sadly. Subtly, 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 you know what the word I mean, oppressed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's at least a reference or a dichotomy between the um, Huntsman and the White Fang. Oh, I was so scared I was going to screw that. No, but I mean it. It's like we've seen Ruby grow so much during this second volume. Wait, sorry, I missed this part. I'm going to try to speak less during these songs and more at the, at the end of the songs, not to interrupt the flow. Yeah. 
just real quick, is this referring to Summer Rose? The fact that we don't know much, but she probably died or uh, disappeared fighting the Grim. That's true, are huntsmen and huntresses really um, shields for people or are they really being secretly used as a stash of weapons uh, for the war to begin at any point? I don't know. So many things at play. Yeah, I was saying it before, but I feel like now I can talk about it because even though this song's still on, we've heard this part. Um, she was so um, young, well, she still is so uh, really young, she's two years younger than the others, but she was so naive, and she still is, kind of, but she was a bit different when we were seeing her, for example, at the beginning on Volume 1, Chapter 1. We saw her in the story, in the, not the story, the store that was called Dust Till Dawn. I remember that because that was a funny reference for me to Dusk Till Dawn. Or From Dusk Till Dawn, I think is the name of the movie, whatever. So um, we saw her there when there was a, a robbery happening at the moment. And she, um, she fought and she was really badass, but she didn't take it seriously. I don't think she was being, well, handling that as a complete adult, given she was joking, she was messing around with her headphones and kicking the butts of the evil guys. But what if the store owner had been injured? Or we don't know. She used to take things a bit too lightly, but I feel like now... Um, Maybe it wrapped on her from Wise, but she's a bit more aware now of the things that happen and that she does. So, at least that's a grow that I can see on her, and I feel like all of them have grown a bit. Wise has learned how to accept others a bit better, like for example, Blake and the White Faunus. Not the White Faunus, sorry, the White Fang and the Faunus and stuff. Blake has learned to forgive herself a bit and that she has to continue fighting but she can't burn her burn herself all over and get consumed so she can't be useful in the future that's not good either <sighs> and yang i was going to say yang but sorry yang but yang isn't actually i don't know what to say about her because we haven't touched her so that much during this volume but i feel like She's starting to see her friends as her friends and giving them the significance they should have. I feel like she was obsessed, or even though if she didn't show us, even if she didn't show us, she was kind of obsessed with finding her mother. But now I feel like she values Team Ruby much more and she, is, she feels a part of them, which she didn't feel like a part of before, at least for me. Now let's get into the next one. I hope this wasn't too much talking. I feel like talked. I talked more than the song was long. So, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> English is hard sometimes. But I'll see you right now. Die by Jeff Williams and Casey Lee Williams. <laughs> no surprises there. But the title reminds me of Burn from Volume 1. Um, have we heard this one? I think we have, and I think I thought this was Burn. Sorry, the same happens to me every time I start listening to it and I forget the lyrics. with what was it was it rage no die was the name it 
is this song about? Who is this song about? Revenge. I don't know why I just got goosebumps. You can't see it, but oh, holy shit! I feel like whenever I hear a song this like raging, I feel I think of um, Young, and I thought this song was about Young. But although the beat and the music make me really feel of uh, think of Young. The lyrics make me think of the conflict between humans and the faunas. The hate swallows all the love. That's right, but that's a heavy truth. This is such an epic song, it reminds me of when I used to listen to metal when I was a teenager. Maybe my hair tipped you off, but I used to do it a lot. Although, fun story, my hair isn't a stylish choice, or um, not like I wanted my hair this long. It used to be like a really short, um, really short hair, like this was the top, but I let it grow for over three years. and. This is where we are now. This song gives me vibes of like make me feel it makes me feel like this singer is considering them themselves as a bullet to be shot, but they don't really appreciate their own safety. Like they want to be consumed in the fight. It's so different from other songs and the messages they send. I don't have much more to say about this one. Sorry, every time I do the same, I say I'm going to wait to the end to talk about the song. And I talk about it on the song, during the song, because I'm dumb. But um, I didn't know what to say much during this one, because uh, I don't know what to, uh, what to take from it, because there are so many possible reads here, as I said, given the um, hype and the metal components of this song, I'd say it's young and also it's like, it's about a really Battleborn um, character, I'd say that's an, uh, an expression, I didn't make that up, maybe I did, I hope not. So uh, it's about someone that lives on the fight, lives to fight, and doesn't expect anything after the fight, I mean someone that uh, expects to be consumed on that fight. And I don't know, I don't th uh, like to think of Yang uh, feeling that way. But maybe she does, although right now I don't think I don't feel like she's in any crusade, or maybe not in any that I know of. She's looking for her mother. Now, who could it be about to uh, Blake? It would be about Blake, and it could be about the uh, uh, the bleak future and how. It's impossible for some people to just love everyone in the world. They just can't do it. They have to segregate people and well, people and phonos, sorry. They have to differentiate them so they can treat them differently. Mm, how can I put it? There's so much racism in, well, in this world too, but I mean in Remnant, like, 
most, well, maybe not most, but so many humans hate Phonos um, irrationally, like they're just different and that's why they hate them, makes, ah, makes me not wonder why Blake or other Phonos, really young Phonos, went to the White Fang and got into such extremes, fighting for what they think is fair. Although let's not forget that the White Fang at the beginning was a non-violent um, group. And I think it was Roman and possibly Cinder, the ones that corrupted the organization. But Or and Adam too, who I forgot. And we saw him last time, I forgot too. We're going to see more of Adam, let's go! But I think enough, let's get into the next song. See you in 3, 2, 1... Shine by Jeff Williams and Casey Lee Williams. Go! Wait, wait. I already love it. I really didn't think it was going to be like this. That beginning. Baby! <laughs> I really liked it. And so chill, the background is really good. I know it's just um, fan art, but so calming, so relaxing. I really like this one. What was the name? Shine by Jeff Williams. What? Shine, sorry. Um, is this Pira talking? Because um, I feel like even though it's just fan art, it's going to be John and Pira, the main focus of the song. Did she feel that lonely? Because I, I think I remember that she felt actually really lonely because she, she's so good, so beautiful and so perfect in general. <laughs> Excellent lyrics, 10 out of 10. So she was so out of reach to everyone that uh, nobody ever like treated her normally and John did and that's why she enjoys him so much yeah this is literally Pira and John but I don't feel like Pira is actually trying to work John out I think I feel like she's just trying to help him and she's fine with him liking wise I really want to learn more learn more about Pirra and about Jan's family's backstory. I really like the vibe from this song. The mood songs are my life. The other day I discovered Redbone by Childish Gambino and I can't stop listening to it now. Besides Donald Glover is one of my favorite actors from community. What is this? The bass has changed so much now. This is like a... And the violence, this is like a completely new song now. Imagine Pira's entire school life in Signal. If... not. No, in Beacon. If she hadn't gotten approached by Jan at the beginning, she she would have been alone the entire time because, yeah, she would have had Nora and uh, Ren, but they're not that close, so she would have felt that alienated from everyone the entirety of her stay in Signal or Beacon. Fuck! I already forgot again what the school is signal I believe 
Always signal or beacon. I thought they were going to say flight. Alright. I'm always afraid the next song the next song is going to pop out and I don't want that. So really good song and it reminds me of something like What song does it remind me of? I think it's one of the songs I listened to in an 80s Japanese city pop mix I listened to. I don't know, maybe it's just me thinking of... No, it's not, I was thinking, maybe I heard it in Ruby, but no, no. I've heard something similar, but I don't know where I've heard it. Is it an ending? I think it's an ending from something too. Not this song, but something similar with the baby, dun, dun, dun. you know what I mean. I'm really sorry to everyone that just had to hear that. I hope you skipped it. <coughs> but yeah. Next song, Dream Come True, also by Jeff and Casey. I'm going to stop saying that. Is it about them too, at all? Yeah, it definitely is about uh, Pira, Jean, and Weiss. <laughs> Maybe I'm too tall or just your type, or not your type. Poor Pirra, she's just so insecure. And she's probably like, out of everyone, the character closest to the traditional definition of perfect. Because she's on the physical part, she's got a crazy body, she's crazy intelligent, she's crazy strong, and she's such a nice person. Kiss him in the lips. <laughs> Just do that. <laughs> Stop messing around. Kiss John in the lips. Jean, Jean, didn't, never knew how to pronounce the French name. <laughs> Forget about that little chicken wife. <laughs> She's so uptight. Hey, wait. I love it because in this song you can hear a sassy tone for Pirra that you can't usually hear. Like she would never say that about Weiss, but in the song sounds so sassy but so accurate. This guitar solo, well not a solo but the riff so smooth. Will he ever figure it out though? Okay, th that she's the one for him. No, I thought she meant the fact that she likes him because Sean is so oblivious to everything in the entire world that I doubt he would ever find it out. I, I mean, I'm sure someone's going to tell him and he's going to be so dense that he's literally going to tell them like, nah, I don't think so, you're, you're wrong, nah, nah. I really like songs that have like several levels at the same time like um, she's singing the main line but there's also a choir and then there's herself trying to make like a choir for herself I love it 
Like some kind of cannon here. You can use your semblance to throw pie to his face. He senpai probably notice you. I forgot to check if it was about to end. Okay, you can drop it here. Okay, I really like this one too. This remind this one reminded me of Hercules a bit. Every song that has like that triple choir. I don't know how to put it, but songs like this one really make me think of. Uh, the muses in Hercules at the beginning, the song in the beginning, is that like, maybe this is going to be like, so, so, so uncultured what I'm about to say, but is that maybe considered gospel or is that too far from gospel? Don't know, but I really like that type of songs, those type of songs, but no, that type of songs, but, ah. Uh, No, I don't know what I was going to say, so I'll continue. Well, I liked it a lot, and I <laughs> love that there are so many songs focusing on these two's relationship. I hope this ship gets support, you know what I mean? Like, this is probably the ship I'm most invested in, in the entirety of Ruby. And uh, I want to see where it goes, because uh, it could very well go the route like no um, Pira is strong enough like that she doesn't really need Jean to be whole which is true don't get me wrong that's completely true she doesn't need anyone like nobody needs anyone but I feel like they make such a cute couple <laughs> Caffeine fit Lamar Hall oh so there's someone else new <laughs> by Jeff Williams and Casey Lee Williams Hi, ah, it's about Team Coffee. Coffee, right? It's Coco, Fox, Velvet, and uh, the Japanese guy, Yatsuhiko. This is the song for the entire team, right? Like, um, I was thinking maybe it's the, the song for Coco, but no, I don't think so. No, it's Coco Velvet. And what was the name of the sunglasses girl? I said it before, I think. They came to kick some asses. <laughs> so many hard words. I know them, but I have to process each one of them. <laughs> now nah, I'm bugging now. What was the name of the uh, machine gun girl? Shit. Their uh, Coco? I think she's Coco. But what's the name of Fox? Okay, she's Fox. Or he. Is Fox a she or a he? Coco, Velvet, Fox, and Yatsuhiro. Are they older? They have to, right? I mean, uh, Velvet doesn't seem older than them, but all the others do, and they look so, like, mature and imposing too. Sorry, I didn't realize it changed. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> These lyrics are pure gold. Fucking gold. I'm really sorry that I don't know Jetsuhiro's name. But has he even talked in the time we've been in the show? I think he said a sentence once. Alright, so I'm really excited to meet Team Coffee. Coffee? 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 Coffee. Okay. Because um, Velvet, I was supposed to have seen her uh, quite a few times and I did, but given I was starting reacting or I had started quite close to when I was reacting to it, I wasn't that keen on well, that good at spotting uh, characters, you know what I mean? And I hadn't, like, identified every character in the show, so Velvet did kind of not stick out much for me, but um, now I do know who she is, and I was really excited to see her because I wondered, like, what is it that, uh, you know, why has she been so focused from the beginning while others haven't? Maybe not focused, but she's always been back in the background. So maybe she's going to have a relevant role in the story that we don't know yet. Um, I don't know. But her team is so cool. First of all, green guy, so huge. I love it. I really like like big characters that are strong and quiet and chill. I really like chill characters and Japanese aesthetics and Japanese culture in general as you may have guessed I'm a weeb so I love um, the entirety of the channel is based upon that so I love the f and that issue Fox I don't know much about him or her but Coco such a cool weapon such a cool demeanor she's like so badass so badass. She's, I think I mentioned it, but in Mortal Kombat, I think it is. There's like a fighter that is like an, a Hollywood actor and has like a weird um, selfie finishers. I feel like Coco is really based on that idea. Like she's one of the expendables for fuck's sake. She literally should be in the movie. So... I'm really excited to see more of them and I hope we can get closer to them and see more of their abilities. All Our Days by Jack Williams and Casey Lee Williams. I just stirred <laughs> keyboard so hard. Oh, is this? Sorry, I always forget the name. Tai? Tai Yang? Tai Yal? Tai Yai? Tai... I think he's Tai. And that's little Yang. She's so cute. And why does he look so much like John? That's disturbing. Are they secretly related? This is so soothing, but I was going to say for some reason it's making me sad. No shit, Sherlock, it's supposed to. It's such a good drawing.
He's just such a good singer. Reminds me a lot of a song from a video game that I loved when I was younger, To The Moon. You know, To The Moon. Everything is going to be alright is a song from that video game that reminds me of this one, but it's so good. All the hair in my legs is completely pointy and I have a lot of hair in my legs. But I've got goosebumps. Okay, that mm, was unexpected, and that touched me awkwardly. Um, okay. Fuck! <laughs> okay, didn't see this coming. One second. Fuck. Okay, we're back. I have some issues with the growing and stop being a child, a child and stuff. Fuck. All good. This is so awkward, I've never gotten this emotional on camera. Such a beautiful song. Um, this was awkward. <laughs> okay. Um, never gotten this emotional on camera, and um, I hope you don't mind. But I really enjoyed this song, and it pushed a few buttons that I didn't expect it to. I usually have some issues with accepting growing up, and um, yeah, growing up in general, and time pass. So. A few strings touched. I'm going to just leave it here and jump into the next song. See you in a second. Fuck, I'm all red now. I mean, I look awful after that. Shit. <laughs> well, this next song is... Boop. So, I hope that counteracts the effect of <laughs> the previous song. But let's see Jeff and Casey. They're literally always together. I don't think I've seen any of them alone at any given point. Well, friend killed the Kim Taiji to buy himself, but... That I wonder, are they in love? Because I think they even mentioned that they were in a weird relationship, I think. 
I think they talked about something like that. Why is this so hype? Okay, it's boop. boop. That's so not now that I think of it. If I had to say one character, guess one character that would be like boop, that be not every time. Maybe that's why I like her so much. Yeah, definitely so hype in contrast to the previous song. Oh my fucking god, it's actually boop boop. I fucking love this. She sings so fast! <laughs> I can't even talk that fast in my mother language though. Is Magnhild her uh, own hammer? Like her Mjolnir, uh, her local Mjolnir? I'm going to be looking so much for Nora saying boop because I think she already said it. Oh, okay, that fit. Then I think uh, she already said it, but I can't remember who she said it to. I guess him, Ren. But I'll try to pay attention next time. What is this? This is from the um, first chapter of volume two. They were asking him for uh, the story, right? The, uh, the book story? I think so. Oh, Sacrifice, sorry. By Jeff and Casey. Sorry, I got um, an ad on the in the middle of the screen, so I had to... <laughs> Reminds me of... Have you watched The Crow? This was so metal for this show, like, when they killed him, that surprised me. Well, if you've watched The Crow, the 90s movie, with uh, the son of Bruce Lee, Brandon Lee, um, this song is so similar to its uh, soundtrack. Is this song about Cinder and company and Roman? Wait, is one of them like a uh, hunter, huntress, huntsman gone wrong? That are are they hinting us? Neo, 
I really like Neo. She said, I won't crawl, like we were mentioning before in the song that I thought might be about the white honus, the first one. Is it like um, a theme with the white fang, the we won't crawl? I'm really curious why Mercury um, why Mercury does what he does. Because Emerald, I get she wants the best for herself. But what is in for Mercury? That's 100% about Roman. All the lives you stole, and you're still no closer to your goal. Look at him, so smug, but I think I haven't seen Roman take a dab still. Like, he always loses. Although this last time, he seems to have let them capture him by... Not by accident, like, he wanted them. Yeah, here. Looks like he really wanted them to catch him. Me. Or maybe he wants to talk to someone without getting anyone around that person suspicious because we're still lacking a good old fashioned betrayal and should be around time. <laughs> so, about time. So, what if there's someone inside that is working for them? Like, for example, Ironwood or someone close to him. And they want to talk to Roman, but they can't do it because it's too risky. Now they can. What if they... Uh, what if it's Roman's plan because now he can, like, mind control Ironwood or influence him by talking enough that he can get him to do what he wants. I don't know what Cinder wants. Roman, I can get. He wants power. He wants to fuck people up. He wants chaos. But what does Cinder want? Like, she seems to be aiming for something. So, but we still don't know. Emerald, I'd say, just looks for her own benefit. And uh, working for Cinder seems really fun and profitable for her. But what is Mercury doing here? Is he just here for Emerald or for Cinder? Wonder why. Let's jump into the next song, the bonus track, and listen to it. Although it's not going to be, well, it's going to be acoustic, so I think. No, that's instru instrumental, which I think it's also instrumental. I don't know, but in any case, let's jump into it. This will be the way acoustic version by Jeff and Casey Lee Williams. Okay, so I don't think it's going to be instrumental. Let us see. Summer Rose. Here it looks like her hair is white, I've mentioned it before, but here, this part, that looks like her hair is white, but I don't know if that's a design error or something intentional, but that's just her hair, I don't know. Wait, there's some symbolism here. Wait, I'm really sorry to stop it here, but I remember before they talked about um, the moon. Someone was the moon. Fuck, who was it? Um, it was like crumbling? No, they mentioned something like that. 
and now white uh, petals, which have always meant ruby, uh, sorry, uh, summer. I think it was on Dai, who, uh, or maybe not Dai, but a song that was about Yang's mother, I think. I don't know, fuck. But I think they mentioned like the moon was crumbling or something like that. And here we can see the moon crumbling into white petals. And although the other parts were fan made, I mean the drawings, this isn't, this is taken from the show. Uh, but how many moons are there, by the way? Because we've seen like at least two different moons. One completely destroyed on this part, on volume one, chapter one. And now we're seeing a different one with a different broken pattern. This mustache is always lighting my day up so much. I'm sorry if there aren't so many things to talk about this song in, in this song, but we've heard these lyrics and mentioned them in the previous one. In this exact case, I'm more like enjoying the song and soaking it in while trying to think of anything else to say. That's Jean's uh, ancestor, but wait, because they have boobs, and that means that's a woman, <laughs> I guess, I don't want to assume, but that's something I didn't notice before. This will be the day we all stand up the door. And what is the symbol in Ospin's cap? I've forgotten if we've seen it before, I guess we have. But right now it looked like Ruby's, well the rose crest for me, but it was like sideways, so I don't know. Okay, really good song as always. I really like this one. I love it in every format it is. Um, I've always loved melancholic sad music and uh, every time they get to make a song a ballad, I'm happy. So for example, any Metallica ballads, for example, when I used to listen to a lot of metal were part of my favorites like The Unforgiven, uh, 1, 2 and 3. Um, the day that never comes. I think it's been so long since I listened to Metallica last time. So many songs, so many ballads. I love them. Um, one, uh, the uh, Nothing Else Matters, you know, whatever. So uh, I really like this one, although I'd say I like the normal version better. I don't know. I'd say this song is good as fast as I usually listen to it in the show. Like these uh, arrangements are really good, make it makes it a different song, but I'd say I like the other one better. Still, I loved it, and I wanted to say right now before I forget. Maybe is, I think I mentioned it, or not. Is Velvet based on Alice in Wonderland? Like any of those characters? Because first of all, the White Rabbit has some similarities. Second, her seal, her symbol, is like a heart with stitches. That, first of all, that makes me think of Sally from the um, Nightmare Before Christmas. But, uh, that can also be a reference to the Queen of Hearts, 
Why the stitch stop? I don't know. Maybe we can work it out. Maybe she's stitch. And I'm mm, tripping. Maybe she is a stitch. Have you thought of that? She got ears and stuff. Um, but what, what was I about to say? What was I about to say? Okay. So that and there was something else that made me think she was maybe based on Alice in Wonderland. What was it? Her weapon, what was it? No, I don't think it was a spear. A spear. I, uh, I can't remember now, but I feel like... Oh, I think it was the cafe. Like uh, her being in Team Cafe. Like, uh, no, but that was tea in Alice in Wonderland. What was the Mad Hatcher drinking? Tea or coffee? Or coffee? I guess tea because he offered it to a child. Don't know. Don't think it goes that far. <sighs> it's been pretty much enough. I hope you enjoyed it. I have. I don't really do this often, so I don't know if I talk too much, too little. When I have to, when I don't have to, I don't know. Maybe what I say is dumb, but I hope you enjoyed it and have had at least half the fun I had doing it. So thank you so much for visiting my channel and especially for staying to the end of the video and for being here every time. I'm really thankful. I really appreciate it. And I don't have words to show enough appreciation or at least enough appreciation from what I feel. So thank you so much and I hope to see you all on the next episode. Peace out.